Okay, so let's take a look at Jeff Gabor. He was an Anum soup at Blue Sky, and he works with me again now at McGuff, but from the States. And he is great at filming, great reference. And after we watch this, I'm going to go through some of the things that he helped me out and told me about, about shooting reference that's really beneficial. So he's good at filming reference and utilizing it. He's good at taking out the essence and removing the, the stuff that's no good and really caricaturing it for his, for the film, for the shot, for his animation. And then you get the feeling that maybe that thing watching you is uh, a giant elephant. Oh, there can't be people that small. And the first guy would say, are you calling me a liar? And the second guy would say, if the shoe fits, wear it. And now the fists are flying and the first guy picks up a brick. And you might want to zip up the pouch for this next part. All right, fat boy, you want some of that? Mm -hmm. Why? I'd do it myself, but being a lady, I prefer not to get my hands dirty. I'll just be quiet now. You know how sometimes you get too tired to sleep? You get past the point of no return. <laughs> I kind of feel like that right now. But anyway, I'll shut up. Uh, not quite. How about now? Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Come in, Mayor. Mm, kind of losing you. Whoa. Oh. 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 Mr. Oh, Mayor, are you seriously proposing that we spend the Who Centennial underground like worms? Cool. But let's go through and we'll go through some of the stuff that Jeff does that works really well. So one thing you'll notice is that his reference always, the camera feels very similar to his character, like his, his shot, sorry. If it's a close-up, he's filming kind of a close-up. He's trying to match his camera pretty well. It, not perfectly, but as, as best as he can, you know? So he can take the most out of his reference. And it's not such a huge leap trying to figure out, well, what does that pose look like from this angle? Because I don't really, that's not really the same angle. So try and have similar angles with your reference. Also, there's not a lot of stuff behind him. He's kept things clear. He's wearing clothes that are they they show how his body's moving he's not wearing like like big baggy dark clothes which are hard to see the positioning of your shoulder and your chest and your arms things are nice and clear his lighting is always nice and clear you can see his face things aren't in shadow too much when he has things where he's needs a prop he's making sure he has that so he does he, he knew he wanted to do this hat thing, so he made sure he actually had a hat there to utilize. You know, even here, he's making sure he's actually laying down and he has something that he can interact with to get that feeling. And then as he moves into his blocking and his spline, you can see that it's not exactly the same. He's not copying it. He's taking the the essence of his reference and applying it to his character in a believable way that is better. He's thinking about how can I make this pose clear? How can I get a better silhouette? How can I get more weight out of my character? Basically going through all those principles of animation and saying, how can I make it even better than what's in my reference? Because we don't want to just copy it. That's like, if we're just copying reference, then just make a live action movie. Like, just put a mocap suit on and just do that. You're not bringing anything to the table if you're just shooting, you're just copying your reference. You can see here on this one, he, he deemed that staying in that pose was better. So he stayed there. He didn't, in his reference, he goes, he shoots back. But my guess is he didn't feel that was a strong pose to end on and it didn't feel as clear. So he's like, no, 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 I'm going to do something different here. I think it'll be better. Like I was saying earlier as well, don't be afraid to, do some takes where you overact and also do some takes where you keep it more calm and chill. Some of the biggest things that he would always do is make sure you're doing different takes. A lot of times we'll set up our camera, play our audio, 
and just do 50 takes. And they end up being this pretty much the same with tiny little differences. That's not what we're really shooting for. So what he does, and I, I didn't do this until he brought it up to me, he'll do one take at a time. So he'll set up his audio, set up his camera, hit play, do one take, stop, watch it, look at it, see, okay, I like what that is. I don't like this. Hmm, maybe I should try something like that. So he critiques each after each take. He watches it, sees what he's doing, goes back and does another take. So he's not just spending 30 minutes doing a million takes all in a row, doing the same thing over and over again. He's doing it, assessing, giving himself notes on what to do different next time and shooting another take, stopping, watching that one again. Okay, again. And so he's actually making, making progress, which with each time he shoots his reference, each pass of that audio, he's actually progressing more to what he wants and not just doing 50 takes and going, well, I like take four. He's actually analyzing, critiquing, and trying to progress it to where he's starting to envision the shot going. And another thing to do is don't be afraid to do takes where you just give yourself a different task. So we also had another, her name was Jackie, and she was really big on reference. And her thing is forcing yourself to do different acting choices. And so what she would have us have me do is she would just give me arbitrary things to focus on. So sometimes maybe I, I was doing a shot and I was doing a lot of these big head shakes and head movements. And she's like, okay, let's do a take. Focus on not moving your head. I'm like, okay, cool. So I do the same take. And this time I would try and say the same line of this, with the same quality that I heard, but not move my head. And then it maybe made my hand start to do a lot more. And it might not have been what I wanted, but it gave me new options. Just like on Monday, we were talking about thinking outside of your mental box. It makes you think outside of your box by just giving yourself arbitrary things, not arbitrary, but with some kind of a little bit of logic behind it, but just giving yourself different things to focus on. So you're not just doing the same thing over and over and over. Again. So maybe you'd be like, okay, this time halfway the shot, character's going to stand up. My character's going to sit down. And maybe at the beginning, they stand up. Maybe at the beginning, they the end they stand up or whatever, just different things you can give yourself to do to give yourself as many different takes as possible and watch, excuse me, watch each take after you do it. So you can see what you're doing, decide if you like where that's going or not, what you want to change, um, what you want to keep. You'll get more out of your time while shooting records if you do that. It might feel like it's taking more time because you have to keep stopping and watching, but each take of reference will be of more value to the process. If you do 50 takes of all one after the other, not looking at it, you might as well have just done one, one or two takes and would have given you the same information. I mean, you won't even get to 50 takes if, if you're analyzing and critiquing each, each version, uh, each time you do one.